Hey guys, hey, welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark, and this is Smokey Stephen Mark. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, welcome or welcome back. Oh, it is really nice to see you. It honestly is. I was looking forward to this all day, and we we are going to have a lot of fun today because it's Mondays with Mark International Edition. <laughs> By the time we're done today, we are going to have a full course meal from all over the world. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not all over the world, but we are going to visit three countries, France, Greece and Italy. Oh, yeah, we're going to be pretty busy too. So, um, I don't know. I think we should probably get started. We have a lot to do today. And um, so, I think you should grab your aprons and grab your suitcase. Oh, yeah. And maybe grab a pen and paper because I think you might want to, um, you may want to write these recipes down. I they're pretty good. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. Where should we start? Oh, I guess at the beginning, right? So for our first course, we have to head to Italy. The boy needle, no good, a son of a bitch. Uh, can you leave the garlic out as she says? She leave the garlic out as she says. Oh, atrocity, atrocity. Garlic is sent from the gods above. Garlic, people, everything, everything, everything. She don't like the garlic. She says she don't like the garlic. Uh, I mean, the spaghetti and meatballs without the garlic? Not here. It all starts with the meatballs. <laughs> so in our bowl here, we have one pound of ground beef or ground turkey or ground chicken, your choice. And I'm using ground turkey in mine. And to that, we have a half a cup of breadcrumbs, homemade if you got it, <laughs> two tablespoons of fresh grated Parmesan cheese, one egg, one half tablespoon of fresh chopped parsley, one teaspoon each of Italian seasoning. Uh, we have garlic powder, onion powder, and then we have a half a teaspoon of salt and one quarter teaspoon of pepper. And we're just going to mix that all up nice and good. Just like that. Oh, yeah, I'd say that's good. Okay, and now we're going to roll them into mini meatballs for our soup. And I happen to have a cookie scoop here, which I think makes a very nice size meatball for soup. Fill it up, level it off. That's a nice size there, you know? Think of like maybe a little bit smaller than the appetizer meatball, okay? All right, so what we want to do is turn all of this into this. <laughs> There's our meatballs. All right. And uh, this size should get you about 24 um, total meatballs. 24. 24. That's amazing. <laughs> Great. There's nothing left. Okay. All right. So now we're going to bake uh, in a 350 degree oven until these are all cooked through. Uh, for this size, that'll be about 12 to 15 minutes. And while our meatballs are baking, let's start our soup. So in our soup pot here, we have our classic mirepoix, which is one cup of chopped up onions. Then we have one half a cup of chopped up celery and carrots. And they're sauteing in two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to let them cook down just until they start to soften a little bit, about five minutes. As far as the rest of our ingredients go, over here, well, we have six cups of some good quality chicken broth. And this is a half a cup of fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Oh, yeah. And 24 ounces of your favorite marinara sauce, either uh, homemade or you can get the store-bought stuff, too. And this is eight ounces of spaghetti, which we broke into thirds, boiled to al dente, and then we ran it under cold water uh, just for a minute just to get, that, uh, get the heat off of it and stop that cooking. And as far as our seasonings go, right here we have two tablespoons of fresh minced garlic, one tablespoon of parsley all chopped up and then we have one teaspoon each of oregano and basil okay and our onions celery and carrots are ready to go so now we're gonna add our seasonings 
There we go. And then we're going to continue to stir and cook for one additional minute. Mmm, oh, it smells heavenly. It's that garlic, you know, it's that garlic. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to add our broth. <laughs> oh, yes, our marinara sauce. Yes, okay. Now we're going to give this a stir and allow, allow her to come up to a boil. And then we're going to reduce our heat um, just a little bit, maybe to like medium, a little bit above medium, and let her simmer for 15 minutes. Oh, looking good, looking good. All right, we still have a couple minutes here. Oh, let's check our meatballs. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Oh, yes. Okay, these are really good, ready to go. Oh, I'm excited. All right. All right, so we're just gonna let them chill here until our soup is ready to accept them. Speaking of, let's check our soup. Oh, it's looking good. Okay. <laughs> so now we are going to add add those meatballs right in there. There. And we're going to add our cheese. Okay. And we're going to give that a stir until all that cheese is melted in there. All right. And now we're just going to uh, let her uh, continue to simmer here. Um, and let all those flavors uh, develop for just about another five minutes. So now we're going to add our pasta. I mean, you can't have spaghetti and meatball soup without spaghetti, right? <laughs> and y'all, once that pasta is heated through, which it is right now, that's all there is to this soup. Oh, it is ready to go. All that's left to do is ladle her up into some bowls and maybe garnish with some more Parmesan cheese. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 Giovanella. Oh, yes. Garlic, oregano, feta cheese, all gifts from the God above. Oh yeah, and turkey too. Turkey is definitely a gift from the gods above as well. We are ready for our next course. So as far as our ingredients go, in a saute pan here, we have two tablespoons of olive oil. And back here we have one pound of fresh uh, ground turkey there and you could also use ground chicken if you'd prefer and then we have one medium onion all chopped up there and that would be oh about a cup's worth back here we have three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs and I do like to mix regular breadcrumbs with panko and then we have two tablespoons of chopped up sun-dried tomatoes Ooh, and then one and a half tablespoons of fresh minced garlic we have one egg white and one whole egg two tablespoons of tomato sauce and then I do have the can of tomato sauce here because we're going to brush the top of our meatloaf with uh, with some of it too. Now back here, there's a quarter cup of whole milk. And this uh, right here is a half a cup of feta cheese. And this is about 8 to 10 ounces of frozen chopped spinach, which we thawed. And then we removed as much moisture as we can by squeezing it out or dabbing it with some paper towels. And as far as our seasonings go, oh boy. We have a quarter cup of fresh chopped parsley, one teaspoon of fresh chopped oregano, oregano, one teaspoon of basil, one and a half tablespoons of fresh minced garlic, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And this, oh well this, this is what we start with. Oh yes, yeah, so this is just going to tie everything together. Y'all, we're going to be making our own homemade tzatziki sauce. <laughs> so in my bowl here, I have one cup of plain yogurt. We have a half of a cucumber here, which we peeled and chopped all up. Um, just a, maybe a medium-sized cucumber like that. <laughs> and then we have uh, one half tablespoon of fresh minced garlic, one teaspoon of fresh chopped up dill. Oh, this is 
so good. And uh, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and then this is one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. We're gonna add that right to it, and we're gonna just stir this all up until it's all nice and combined. Ooh. Ooh, there's nothing like fresh tzatziki sauce. Ah, all right, so we're mixed up all nice and good there. So we're gonna put this in the fridge and just let it chill in there until we're ready to use. Okay, so in our saute pan here, we have our onions and we just uh, sauteed them down until they're translucent and nice and soft. That'll be about four to five minutes. And then we're gonna take about two thirds of the, those onions out and we're just gonna add that right to our ground up turkey there, the bowl that we have it in. All right, now to this pan, we're going to add our garlic. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Our spinach, yes, yes, yes and our sun-dried tomatoes. Okay, and then we're gonna turn that heat off and we're just gonna continue to stir it and let it continue cooking there until the heat dies down and all of our ingredients here are heated all through and some of that moisture, uh, we get rid of some more of that moisture too there, you know. Okay, and that's pretty good there. It's, it's actually got pretty dry there, all right? And no more sizzling. <laughs> so now we're gonna add our feta cheese. Doo -doo -doo, and give that a stir. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And our egg white. And we're gonna give that a stir as well. And we're just gonna make sure it's all nice and combined here. And that's pretty good there, all right. So now we're just gonna set this aside until we're ready to add it to our meatloaf. Oh yes. And now to the bowl that we have our turkey and our onions. We're pretty much gonna add the rest of our ingredients. That would be our breadcrumbs and our whole egg and our milk. Do, do, do. and our tomato sauce. That would be the uh, two tablespoons there. And all of our seasonings. Oh yes, this is gonna be so delicious. And now we're just gonna mix this up until it's all really, really uh, thoroughly combined. And we are good, okay. And now I got a nine by five loaf pan and I sprayed it with some non-cook, uh, non, I always say that, non, <laughs> non-stick cooking spray. <laughs> Non-cook, you know, sticking spray. What the heck am I thinking here? <laughs> now we're gonna take about two thirds of our meatloaf mixture here. Doo -doo. I think this is good. And then we're gonna kind of spread that out along the bottom like that okay and then we're gonna make a little indent right in the center mm -hmm. right, just like that yep I think we're pretty good there <laughs> okay there we go I'm having too much fun making this ah okay so now we are going to fill that little uh divot in there with our spinach mix oh we're just gonna mound it in there until uh until we don't have any more of the mix left. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, a little press down there, kind of pack it in there a little bit. Okay, very good, very nice. Oh, okay, and then we're just gonna top, uh, top our meatloaf with the rest of our filling here. And then we're just gonna spread that out all across the top there uh, until our uh, until our filling is all covered. Okay, I think, I think. I think we are good. <laughs> see if you can see it. There you go there. All right. So now, all right, we bake in a 350 degree oven for about 50 to 55 minutes or until a, a, a thermometer reads 165 degrees. Now at the 30 minute mark, you're going to want to pull this baby out and we're going to brush it with the remaining uh, tomato sauce we have, okay? And you could use all of it or half of it. That's totally up to you. I usually use about half of it to put on top there. All right, let's get this baby in the oven. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. It, even, it smells even better, y'all. It really does. Look at 
that. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes before we slice into her, and then we're gonna we're gonna drizzle a little bit of our homemade tzatziki right on top. Oh man, dinner is gonna be so great tonight. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay, but there you have it, our uh, Greek-inspired stuffed turkey meatloaf. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, that turkey. Oh, we had it for dinner last night. It was, honestly, we have none left. We don't. It was so good. Um, you know, and it's nice because you have the, the, the meatloaf and then you have a, a vegetable in there too, you know. Um, and uh, there's just something about it, you know, the spinach and the feta and the sun-dried tomato. It, 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 the flavors work so well together. And that tzatziki sauce on top, oh, it is Primo. Very, very good. And the only like tip I would give you for that turkey meatloaf is to definitely uh, dry out that spinach as much as you can. And that's it. You know? Oh, and what about our, what about our spaghetti and the meat bowl of soup? Oh, this is so good. It eats like a meal too. You could actually have a big serving like this um, for dinner, you know, as your main course you could. But, um, Oh, this is so good. And the turkey meatballs, you know, with the turkey meat, well, in kind of continuity there, you yeah. <laughs> know. Always thinking, got to, right? <laughs> anyway, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, no full course meal would be complete without dessert, right? My favorite part. And for that, we're heading to France. J'avoue, Ame. Oh, my love, I love you. I love you. I love the way you look, and I, I love the way you smell, and I love, love the way you taste. Oh. Dessert, anybody? <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, we do have a fantastic French-inspired dessert for you. We're going to make a French pear cake. This recipe is perfect for a special occasion, you know, like Mother's Day or a birthday or Easter, but it's also perfect any time for a nice sweet treat, and you're totally allowed to eat this for breakfast, okay? I give you permission, okay? <laughs> all right, well, here are all of our ingredients. So, in my mixer bowl here, we have um, three quarters of a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of lemon zest, and then we have three quarters of a cup of softened butter and along with that we have a tablespoon and a half of melted butter oh yes <laughs> and then we are just going to mix that up uh, until it's it's pale yellow and nice and creamy okay now as far as the other ingredients go over here we have three eggs we have one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice and then a third of a cup of whole milk as far as our dry ingredients go we have one cup of all-purpose flour and then we have one half cup of self-rising flour and we're just going to sift that or, or or whisk that all together until it's all incorporated just like this okay now you may ask oh my goodness what is self-rising flour you know uh, uh if you don't have it don't you worry here's a recipe for you super easy it's just flour baking powder and salt and you can make a small batch like the recipe says or double it triple it quadruple it it's just uh those recipes are like one cup two, you know, one and a half uh, teaspoons of baking powder, okay? Okay. And finally here, oh yes, we have our pears. We have two pears of your choice, which we have peeled, cored, and then we sliced. And the easiest way to do that is peel your pear with a, with a vegetable peeler, and then just quarter it like this, and then cut off the top, and then you can core it just like that. So easy to do it like that. And then we're going to make our slices, oh, you know, about a quarter inch thick or so, okay? And you'll need two of those. <laughs> so, let's get started. I gotta get a whipping up my butter, sugar, and lemon zest here. 
looks good to me. Now we're going to add our eggs, but we're going to add them one at a time, and we're going to beat well after each egg. So we are ready to go there with our eggs. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, and now we're going to take our uh, our mixed up all-purpose flour and self-rising flour, and we're going to add just about half of that in there. Okay, so we put half of that in there, doo, 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 and then we're just going to kind of fold it in there until it's just combined. And now we add our milk. Doo -doo, and our lemon juice. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And then we're going to mix that until it's combined. And then we add the rest of our flour uh, mixture into here. There we go. <laughs> okay. And then um, we're just going to mix this again until, uh, yeah, it's combined. So now I have a uh, an eight or a nine inch spring form pan, which I sprayed with a nonstick cooking spray. I got it that time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and then we lined the bottom of it with some parchment paper. And now we're going to take about about half of our batter here. I'm going to put it in the bottom, and then we're going to spread it out uh, all the way to the edges. Do <laughs> all right. Good. And now. Our pears, we're going to arrange um, half of our pears on top of our um, batter here. And then we're going to top with our uh, with our uh, leftover, our remaining batter here. And then again, we're going to spread that out all over the top to the edges. All right, and then we arrange the rest of our pears right on top. Here, we'll put him right in the center. Right on top, just like that. And then get some extra melted butter, and we're just going to brush those pears. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, because why not, right? It's butter. All right. And then to finish things off, oh, yeah, some coarse sugar or sanding sugar on top of those pears. Oh, man, this is going to be so good. I just, I, I really cannot wait. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, all right. Well, now we bake in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh you should smell this whole kitchen. It is heavenly it is heavenly okay so now we are going to just uh, let this sit here in the pan and uh, let her cool off a little bit there you know about 10 15 minutes before we dig in oh yes and we can just you know, slice her up and maybe add some powdered sugar or some whipped cream mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, goodness, am I a happy guy? I mean, my taste buds are like singing right now, for real. How about this cake, y'all? I just wanted you to see, you know, up close here. You see it? Oh, it, it, it's so good. It, it tastes like you, it tastes like you got this from a bakery, really. I mean, it is, uh, it is a very, uh, a very easy cake to make and and the results are really really outstanding now if you do use an eight inch uh spring form pan instead of a nine just kind of keep an eye on it you may need to keep it in the oven for another minute or two you know but uh, uh i would just keep an eye on it i did mine in a nine inch there and uh, oh boy did that turn you know they all turned out really really good and they all really complement one another for our full course meal and the one thing we were missing was a side dish right like a potato or something but no worries, just keep your eyes out because I happen to have a short coming out that goes along with this uh, for our side dish. And we don't have to travel anywhere because 
It's from right here in the USA. <laughs> I got to get USA in there, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I really hope you enjoyed uh, our time together today. And uh, I had so much fun, and I do love this theme. And like I said earlier, I think we'll probably end up doing this theme again. I mean, why not? The possibilities are endless, right? I mean, how many countries are there in the world? I don't even know. I, I don't. I really don't know. But you know what? After this, I will because <laughs> I'm going to Google it. I really don't know. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be I, I think it'll be fun to do this again. If you have any suggestions or recipes you want to see, just shoot them on over to us. <laughs> so thank you so so much for spending your time with me uh, today. I really hope you had a good time, and I hope you enjoyed the recipes. And I do hope you try them out, and if you do. Definitely shoot us a picture, okay? We're getting ready to uh, share some viewer pictures. So if you made any of them, shoot me a picture. If you made anything we've done in the last few months or whatever, yeah, just definitely send us a picture. It's fun to share them, uh, share them with everybody. So all right, all right. Please, please remember to subscribe. It, it really would mean the world to me. And check us out over on social media. And if you need to contact us for anything, well, all of that info is right down below. That's our email address and our post office box. Oh, thank you again. This was this was a fun evening. It really, really was. You have a fantastic week, <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Okay. Ciao, everybody. Ciao, ciao, Italian. It's the garlic. It's all about the garlic. Really, it is.